Hello and welcome to the next episode of Let's Keep the Conversation Going series. Today I'm joined by Jonathan White, who is UK Lender Relationship Director at Knowledge Bank. Jonathan is undoubtedly one of the most experienced guys operating in our mortgage sector and he has really interesting breadth of experience. If there are any listeners looking for a mentor, then I'm sure by the end of this recording, you'll be keen to put some time to talk with Jonathan. During the next 45 minutes, we'll be discussing why mental health and well-being is especially important to Jonathan and reflecting on how he has overcome some of the personal challenges he's faced. And be assured, Jonathan's story is great and inspiring and one that you'll want to hear. So, morning, Jonathan. How are you doing? Good morning. I, I am absolutely fantastic. It's a bit dull here in Worcester, but um, no, I'm, 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 I'm ready and, and really looking forward to speaking to you, Jason. Many, many thanks for stepping forward to uh, yeah, volunteer you, 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 your experiences today. And I think um, probably one of the few people who actually top trumped me in terms of experience in the marketplace now. So I think I entered <laughs> in, in 19, uh, I think 1991. And I know everybody looking won't, yeah, won't think we're a day over 21, but I think you top trumped me. And um, I think you know, starting with that Friends Provident and your early years and the journey through and to where we are now is probably a good starting point, if that's OK. So... Can we have yeah. a, a bit of a whistle stop tour? Because again, I know you've had a breadth of roles as I touched on in the opening, and uh, yeah, really interested to see where you were and where you are. Yeah, absolutely. You mean in an interview kind of style? Um, I'll, I'll do. It. Um, I started. Uh, I've only ever really worked in three areas of of my career. One is um, distribution. One is um, what I'd refer to as sort of um, um, uh, insurer stroke lender. And the other one um, is technology. So um, latterly, I've kind of got that blend. Um, I, I started my career, um, I left school at 16. I, I, I My first role was a YTS in a, an insurance brokers in Wolverhampton. I shan't mention any names. Um, and it gave me a huge opportunity. You know, I was probably one of Thatcher's ch children, you would say. And, um, uh, you know, that was a great opportunity. I... I, I I got an opportunity then to work within um, an insurer, a very famous insurer at the time, Lent, uh, Friends Providence, uh, again, based in in, in Wolverhampton. Um, I, I was the youngest ever inspector they recruited, and I was the first non-graduate, which, I, again, when you talk about your trophies over the years, that's actually uh, sticks with me, that, um, that, um, that yeah, I, I, I was their first ever non-graduate. Um, I worked in Plymouth. I worked in Exeter. Um, uh, really enjoyed that as a my role was out on the road see, seeing brokers I was very young at the time I mean really quite young at the time and um uh you know thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it uh, unfortunately um the, the southwest was the graveyard of ambition for me because it was quite slow and I was young and wanted to come up so I, I I'm controlled my career at that point and and saw the advent of distribution change so um, I went to work for an organisation called Countrywide, not the Countrywide that the mortgage market knows, but the the predecessor, I guess, of um, of Sesame. So based in Oxford, it was really the first, uh, along with DBS, one of the one of the first networks. And I worked there successfully for ten years. I had a role, a host of roles um, that I performed, but primarily my success was around um, recruiting advisors. And, and, you know, back in the day, we were recruiting 14 firms a month and there was four of us. So it was a real growth, uh, growth business, really successful. I really enjoyed, enjoyed that. Um, latterly, um, the owner of the organization, Mysis, brought a whole host of other distributors. Uh, if some of us remember, you do, Jay Sanksy nodded, um, the likes of DBS and Financial Options and Kestrel. So uh, as the management grew, as the as the as the advisor group grew, I uh, my seniority uh, um, uh, opportunity presented itself, um, and and I took that absolutely. So uh, I was the operations director of two of those brands, Kestrel and Countrywide, and um, really delighted to have um, to have got that experience. Operationally, it was a challenge, but um, it was a proper direct director's role, what I would describe as a sort of AP one director. So um, yeah, really enjoyed. Um, I was poached by Bank Hall at the time, which was separate from Sesame, uh, by a guy called Peter Mann. I don't know whether anybody knows Peter, but um, a stalwart of the industry. Um, Peter uh, uh, convinced me to go and do effectively the same work for, for Bank Hall, which I was the first person ever to move from one to, to the other, but thoroughly sort of enjoyed that time. But what I was um, thinking at the time was that 
technology was going to start to play a major part in distribution. Um, and an opportunity came up at um, the exchange, which is now Iris, of course, um, to work with organizations like uh, Life Search and Protection Advisors um, to really start to understand how tools could, could, could improve um, uh, uh, the broker journey. So I did that, uh, really enjoyed that, and, 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 and it kind of gave me an, gave me an appetite for dis distribution technology. Um, I then thought I'd hit the hit the jackpot. I joined um, an organization called Personal Touch, which many of you will know. I was appointed to the board. I had a, a fantastic team, recruited an awesome team there. Uh, and I will mention some names, um, but Neil, uh, Vicky Jeffs, uh, Charlotte, Louise Evans, these guys all were in my team. So, I mean, the dream team, but unfortunately, and we'll come on to it, um, uh, you know, the business was in, was not in great shape uh, and um, and we were challenged. Uh, so I continued in technology. I made a step to um, the investment side, RAP platforms, uh, worked for a business for a year uh, called Sprint Enterprise, which um, aggregates data between um, uh, platforms and uh, IFA is really fascinating and, and was brought on there purely in a uh, director of sales uh, role. Um, and then I kind of wanted to get back into mortgages. So um, I sat down and had a coffee with Mark at, um, at Mortgage Brain, uh, uh, Mark Lofthouse. And Mark said, look, we don't have a job, but we'd like you to work for us. So I did um, uh, a period at Mortgage Brain working with lenders um, uh, on the back office stuff uh, around ESIS and the like. Um, so yeah, fascinating stuff. Latterly, I um, I actually took two years out to go and work for the Institute of Customer Service, which I'm sure we'll come on to. Um, so non FS related, and um, you know, working with um, with with some fantastic organisations, TWP and AA and TSB and the likes. Um, and then nine months, ten months ago, um, I was really fortunate to have an opportunity to 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 meet Ying and. Uh, start to work at uh, Knowledge Bank, which I'm, again I'm sure we'll come on to. Is that too long? Is that okay? Wow! <laughs> I, you said in the opening dinner that you'd got um, a breadth of experience, and um, I think you know covering that district. Well, that that apprenticeship, I suppose, you got as a, a friend's provident. I had a similar yeah. kind of, I suppose, um, experience at Pearl Assurance. You know, starting yeah. off collecting the premiums off the old days in the oh. uh, yeah in the, in the in the local area and um, getting the financial planning certificate, etc. It was a brilliant apprenticeship coming into financial services and I suppose Friends Provident would have been similar but actually touching the different areas you yeah you you have done and um, is I'm not sure there's many people uh more experienced as I said touching so many different areas of the market than than yourself and what about so I know look I was really blessed to um to to to, to have Nicola as a, 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 a sidekick, as a co-founder with yeah, with the yeah, with the charter. So I know it's an area that's really passionate, or that she's personally passionate passionate about. What about yourself? So where does the the importance and the value of um of mental health and well being actually? Where, where where what is it that 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 that's, that that you're affected by, or that you've got a um a passion? Where did the, where does the passion come from to get involved with stuff like this? Well, I mean, I, I mean, through personal experience, Jason, I think, um, you know, we, we, we'll talk shortly about some of those uh, instances. Um, I think what well, the message, one of the messages that I wanted to get across today is sometimes you can be in mental distress and you don't know it. Um, and I think what's happened is, you know, when I've prepared for this and when I've talked about my own situation, whilst there's a trigger, that's a major trigger that that you think is causing it. Actually, if you look back, there are others, um, and, and I don't want to appear, appear to be too deep and meaningful, but that there are probably four triggers in my career, you know, what, what that has been a fantastic career, really enjoyed it and, and, and you know, got on with everybody I, I work with and have been uh, really successful. Um, but there are four triggers that that really, um, I, I'm sure will come on to next, but, um, but you know, that that's, that's why it's important to me to be able to say to people, look, um, it's never just one thing. It's going to be other things in there and you need to be sort of aware of that. But before I go on to those four things, can I just read something? Yeah. OK, so um, I just want to read uh, a post that was on uh, LinkedIn about 10 months ago. Um, this is a difficult post. In 2018, I left an unhappy marriage and my son's age 17 and 19 at the time haven't spoken to me since. 
this together with an extreme acrimonious divorce, which lasted over three years and took its, it took its toll on my mental health, which resulted in the end of my career as I knew it. I was overwhelmed and simply couldn't cope with balancing a senior role alongside the barrage of solicitors' correspondence, including demands for money uh, I didn't have, threatened with bankruptcy, and the grief of losing my children. I walked away from the divorce with, it, with five Aldi carrier bags of possessions. My confidence and mental health were broken. Uh, no one at work knew the full truth of my situation, and I crumbled into a deep and dark depression. Um, after a five year, after the past five years, I've undertaken counselling um, alongside medication and managed my depression. Recovery is not linear, although I know uh, have considerable, uh, considerably more good days than bad do days and with the loving support uh, from home. Now that my mental health is being managed, I want to focus on getting back to uh, the career and back on track. Um, and hopefully that by telling my story, my contacts will understand why I've fallen off the radar for some time. Therefore, I ask if you know or know of any opportunities which may suit me, please contact me. I look forward to an immediate start and can promise to give everything to the chance of a fresh start. Thanks for reading. I hope you understand. And please don't be a stranger. That post um, was posted 10 months ago. Um, it received uh, uh, over 3,000 sort of engagements, 4, mess 450 messages, uh, and it reached almost 300,000 people. Um, and the messages that were received from that post were one of respect, honesty, bravery, um, inspiring to others. Um, and that was my post. Um, uh, some of you may not have seen that, but that was my post. That was the the fourth critical point of my working life that got me to that point um, where, you know, whatever enjoyment I'd had in my career, my personal life had triggered that uh, scenario. And I just wanted to share that and say, look, um, you know, you've got to be brave to do that. I just did it because I desperately wanted to do it and I needed to do it. Uh, and I was sort of in encouraged to do it. Um, so hopefully that just kind of tees up the next part of our discussion, Jason, uh, very nicely. Well, well look, I, you know, I, as I said, I think people stepping forward and, and and being brave and courageous, and that's where it is, brave and courageous, you know, sharing stories and moments like that is is what the as we keep the conversation series is is all mm -hmm. about. I think the more leaders and 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 figureheads we've got in the sector who actually indicate you know they've had their own challenges and 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 also you know see the support they've received from the people around them and is hopefully something that can encourage you know, others not to suffer in silence as we as we move forward so i'm really grateful for you sharing that i really yeah it really am john and i mean you mentioned the four pillars there and um, yeah, yeah what could you could just maybe expand on that a little bit yeah, sure. to understand sure. what they yeah, what they are for you the um i mean uh, again I, I i've made some notes so if i do look here that's fine um i think there were four key triggers for me um latterly you know between working uh for the institute and um you know uh, a number of people responded to that post one of which was um was ying ying rang me within about uh two hours of that post um and i just want to make it really clear that um within two days of that post i was working for knowledge bank and and i'll never forget that ever um so the triggers, I think there were two triggers. I was working in, in an organization where um, it was tough and at the uh, a senior position, board member, um, and the business wasn't in great shape. And I think what I'd realized was that, that when, when I look back at my, my career, it, it, whilst that might have been the trigger, my personal situation may have been the trigger, there were um there were these triggers earlier on that that clearly had impacted and, and and were probably a flag that i missed and the people around me missed uh, and we can go into any of that uh, uh, as we as we wish um but i think with the first one i mean it was just purely the weight of responsibility um i was working in an organization and we had 1200 advisors i was responsible for advice i was 
the person that sat in front of the regulator. Uh, I was the person that said how we could affect the culture of the advisors at that point. And, and frankly, you know, do I feel equipped? Really? I mean, I don't know. It was it was it was a really, really scary situation. A alongside that, there was the financial position of the business. Um, and I can remember, Jason, um, without breaking any commercial confidences, I can remember walking around my garden one evening with bare feet, um, thinking, what the hell are we going to do? You know, I I've drafted we've drafted a press release to say that we're going to have to shut the business just in case we do. We've got a decision waiting on the regulator as to whether sanctions are in place. Um, and I got the responsibility of probably 150 people that worked for us. So, you know, that responsibility is absolutely huge. And in an industry where, you know, it, I mean this nicely, it's a backslapping industry. It's a personality led industry. It's how well are you doing and how well are we doing? And everybody's got to kind of keep this stiff upper lip. Um, if everybody can't be doing well, somebody's got to be doing badly. And around you, there will be people that, um, that aren't doing well and, 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 but they're covering it up. And I think at that point, you know, in retrospect, you know, that was a huge issue. I'd got, my hair was falling out. I was stressed. I remember um, most poignantly um, fainting at the board table and that was classic, um, just overwhelmed. And um, my colleagues noticed, but you know, you know, that, that, that's, that was a trigger in retrospect, that was a massive trigger, but I didn't see that. You know, I just carried on. And were, were there any other kind of symptoms? So obviously, I mean, that's a, a, a I mean, usually you know, mental health is not always visible, is it? That's something where, you know, it, it, it's been visible. So were there any other symptoms? And how how were you trying to, what coping mechanisms were you, were you using to try and overcome what you were encountering? Um, I, I don't think I was, if I'm honest. Um, I, I genuinely don't think, think I was. I was... Um, I was a senior guy in an organization that was trying to, you know, wrestle the tiger. And 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 we gotta we gotta be um we gotta be strong to the staff, we externally. We gotta, you know, face our offices faced out, we've gotta be there. Um I think there's that uh, that pressure really. There was and then anyway, there was that pressure to, you know, keep that external. Uh, and we were fighting for our lives, you know, and I personally was fighting for my life in terms of, um, you know, a personal life. I got I got children, I got a wife and I got kids and they were at private school and I got a house and I got two cars and all of that stuff that we do. Uh, and it was it was potentially going and and um, whilst, you know, successful careers uh, happen, the pressure of making sure you maintain that is is, is there. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was. I don't think I did, Jason. If I'm honest, if I'm absolutely honest, I don't think I did. Um, so that was that was a tough time, and and so, so so kind of that's the first trigger. The other trigger that again I've only really just found was um, was a tragic story, really. Um, and I didn't think at the time it really affected me, but it clearly has. Um, and I remember talking to my boss at the time, who was an who was an excellent, you know, perfect manager. Um, you know, a mentor to me in my career. Um, but we had to make some pretty tough decisions in that organization around compliance. Um, and I won't go into the detail, but we unfortunately had to deauthorize one of our advisors because he'd, they'd done something um, uh, that they shouldn't have. Um, and 24 hours later, we committed suicide. And, and, and I was part of a team four that had made that decision. Um, and it was the right decision for the regulator and it was the right uh, it was the right decision for the business. But the responsibility still weighs over me. Really, it does. Uh, so I think, you know, PTSD around that, I think, was probably something I didn't even know about. But um, but yeah, that was that was a that was another trigger. I think, you know, this wonderful career to this point where um yeah, it's it, it's tough, real, really, really tough. Wow, wow. And what what about the 
the, the third one. What was the third? So again, so, I mean, um, they, they, they say they say buses <laughs> normally come in in in, in twos, but you got you got four of these juggernauts coming to yeah that have come towards you. Yeah, I mean that, that that I think the fourth one was more around, and again, these sort of mean in retrospect. Um, you know, I was going through a difficult time uh, personally, but uh, I, I worked for an organisation, and the and the management were fantastic. Um, they were old school. They were, um, we kind of, got, I would describe it as dressing room management. <laughs> um, we all kind of knew where we were, but they were extremely caring. Um, and I think what the point that I want to make is, is that um, organisations can change like that. There was a change in, in management. Um, and from a caring organisation, the direct management uh, went really the opposite. And it, and it, um, it created me to go, into a deep, deep depression. And I, you know, the details I don't, I don't necessarily want to go into, but that was a trigger. That was a trigger that um, drove me into um, re-evaluating a whole host of things. And, and probably um, uh, at the time, hadn't realised how, how, how difficult that, that was. With the inextricably linked, the, so the, 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 the business challenges and the day-to-day -day working environment challenges that you found themselves, were they inextricably then linked to the challenges that then occurred in that home environment and the, you know, on, on, the, on the personal side? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the one thing I would say, and I know you and I talked about this, was, uh, was um, you know, the quality of management, the quality of management. Um, one of the things that I've always tried to do as a manager is, is absolutely obsess about my staff, about, uh, obsess about the not necessarily what they're actually doing but it's how they are and and whether they're in the right job whether they're uh, the job's too long much for them whether it's you know they've got stretch um but really understand and hopefully people that have worked for me would say that um i, I think we need to be uh cognizant is there are hot spots of our industry where people aren't skilled they're not skilled enough to understand and 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 i mean the analogy i would use would be um I, i'm a dog lover i've got two french bulldogs i don't know whether you've got a, a dog but my dog doesn't need to talk to me for me to know there's something wrong with it and and i think you know if you follow that premise um skilled management skilled professional managers um should be aware of it they should be aware of it there you know ch changes in routine um sudden losses of weight suddenly going to the gym compulsively uh being late or being early or wanting to stay away not wanting to stay away all of these things are a clue to people's changes and, and i think you know what i'd encourage uh, uh certainly management to, to, to do is to is to make sure your people are skilled at managing people if that makes sense um because it's one managing the process it's two managing the uh, prop flow it's it, but it actually it, the basic skills are managing people if you can't do that you really shouldn't point. be managing yeah it's a really good point i mean look there's, there's a difference in the in in, in response you're going to get if you ask somebody how they're feeling to yeah. how they're feeling on a one to ten and yeah i think the the masks one thing that's come out with the conversation series is that you know, people do wear different masks. So mm -hmm. being able to spot telltale signs like you know, weight loss, weight gain, and how they, they, they look in their eyes, and just those points that you've you, you've just mentioned, it it is um it's a it, it's something that skilled managers they, yeah they they've just got to be conditioned to yeah to be able to to, to be able to spot. So so I'm just wondering. So at, at, at the times where you know the darkest times, you know the the having coping mechanisms probably weren't there and, and and that's why you you probably drifted in, in into the dark places as you've actually come through and you look everybody's still going to have you know daily challenges you've got to look at the, the market we've had over the last 10 months you've been at, at knowledge bank with everything that's been going on i'm just yeah. interested in with that learned experience you've actually got now and yeah. that and um, understanding you've got i'm just interested in understanding you know what maybe what coping mechanisms you use now and what maybe hints and tips would you have for people who were where you were and and the journey that they've got to go through to get where you are now yeah i think i mean i think what i'd say first of all is 
I'm a totally unrecognizable person, uh, Jason. You know, it, it is, you know, from, when I talk to school friends, when I talk to, you know, people I've known for sort of 40 odd, 50, 40, 40 years, um, they, um, they say you're completely different. You know, I, I, I've got long hair. I've got long hair. I've always had, a, you know, industrial, um, industrial crew. And, uh, you know, I, I less, I care less about what people think of me. I genuinely do. Um, because actually uh, what, I, what I've realized is it's really more about, it's more about me. I, I, I'm not, I'm not performing well unless I'm being me. Uh, and I think that's the one thing that I would say to, uh, to people, what, what have I done to cope? Um, I, uh, you know, I enjoy um, family time. I enjoy walking the dogs. I go for, we go for, my, my wife and I, we work in the same office. So we sit across the glass table. She's not here at the moment, but um, she's a marketing director uh, and I do what I do. And, and she can tell when I need to go and walk the dogs and I can tell when she does. And I think that is really important. And, and, and if you had Nicola, uh, Firth on here, she would say, if you need to walk the dogs at half past 11 at, in the morning, go and do it. If it's three o'clock in the afternoon, go and do it because she recognises it. So uh, I've been a lot more um, sort of self-indulgent, I would say, in terms of looking after myself. I mean, there's a whole host of of things. I mean, I, I've suddenly found a passion for cooking. Um, you know, cooking is um, a way that I can, uh, you know, create. I think one of the things that that I feel about the industry that we're in is actually we do some really good stuff, but we don't actually create anything, do we? We don't actually build anything. So I've become this sort of obsessed with building and making stuff. So I bake a bit, I cook. Um, uh, we've got um, we've got a, a little bolt hold in in Cornwall that we go to. So we go down there and we do stuff. I bought a small boat for the estuary at Wade Bridge, um, and and quite bizarrely. Um, football's always been my life and, and I've always played football, um, but I've moved into restoring vintage mopeds and and, and I can't explain why, um, uh, but I've now got six of them, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, and, and I and I just love relaxing and doing that kind of stuff. And, and I think the outcome, I was talking to an ex-colleague of mine, because the, the output of our role is so sort of virtual, um, to actually see something at the end of it is quite rewarding to a to 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 a man from Wolverhampton whose father and grandfather used to produce stuff, you know. Um, I, I see that that um, I, I can understand the um, the importance of that. So yeah. so I do stuff. That's that's what I do. The hobbies, interests, and 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 cooking, and really just having that focus on me time. So without being selfish about it, just having a focus on yourself and. You know, having that work life integration and 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 if it needs to be at half past eleven, you go for a walk. You go at half past eleven because yeah. you, you, you're hardworking bloke. It's part of your DNA. The, that that work and efforts not gonna yeah not gonna go away. And I mean, how do you think that? So we, we we've spoke about yourself. What about the employers and and the and maybe the employers that have been on the the journey with you know, with you? How, how do you feel employers are now are recognizing and supporting? employees compared to where they were and you know what if we what what can employee employers learn around yeah. maybe the experiences that you've had i i, I think that it uh, the marketplace is unrecognizable if i'm honest um but i don't think it's complete i i definitely think that people are aware of it um i think people are trying to do some stuff jason but i think there's still loads and lots to do um i i I don't want to accuse any particular organisation of bandwagon jumping, but I, I do fear that there's a bit of that uh, in terms of, oh, yeah, yeah, we we do loads for our staff when actually they don't. Um, so I would encourage uh, organisations and see organisations that actually do it, that don't necessarily talk about it or don't need to talk about it. Um, uh, so I, I would encourage them to, to upskill. I would encourage them to... Um, genuinely invest in it uh, and uh, you know there is a cost to it just like there's a cost to a coffee machine it's the well-being of the staff you know we spend money on this let's spend money on this and 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 and, and I, back to the point that I made earlier was was I'm really I really strongly believe that um you know that instinctive 
um, emotional intelligence uh, uh, should be addressed within um, some levels of management. And it's not a criticism of any individually. It's just a kind of it's it's where we've got to uh, as a as a profession, I think, in terms of selling and, and, and uh, you know, visiting customers, etc. Yeah. Uh, I think that that, you know, it, it's what's more important now is to be nice. And actually, we can't always be nice. You know, sometimes in the world, in business, you've got to be nasty. And and I think sometimes we f I fear that organisations want to be nice to everybody. Um, and it's a really nice place to be and we can't upset people. But actually, you know, never confuse um, uh, kindness for weakness in, in terms of, uh, you know, I'm going to have to deliver some tough, tough messages, but I'm going to do it sympathetically and I'm going to do it in a way that I'm, I've am i already thought about how you might react. I, I, I think the fear is that, do you understand what I'm saying? It's The fear is there yeah. of, well, we don't want to upset people, but but you, so there's, a, there's something missing. And that's something I think is that uh, understanding of the individual. So get to know your individuals, get to know what um, what causes, you know, what they what's going on in their life. And, and make sure it aligns to what you want them to do for you. That's important as well. That's the balance is is uh, uh, that we have to make sure the right individuals are in the in the right role. If that's not too controversial, and, and look, that does make sense. And I think what we've come across in in previous conversations, which you'll appreciate, is yeah you know, that 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 importance of a good culture and ensuring that good culture means that usually absenteeism is is, is less okay. than it would be within a, a peer group and you know caring for others sharing showing empathy for others um and communicating effectively is 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 something where you know just good businesses it's not a surprise that good businesses they prosper just have those part of their yeah part of their dna the other thing that that that, that, that comes out along similar lines which you might have um appreciate is the is the importance of presenteeism so i wonder um, yeah, because people talk about absenteeism and the impact that can have, but presenteeism, and um, I just wonder, yeah, how many how many times are people just going through their working days almost like zombies, and they're there in in body and not mind? I just wonder what your view is on on, on that, and whether it's something you you feel you've you, you you have you been in that kind of state in in your own personal circumstances, and just wonder what your view is around yeah presenteeism. Yeah, I, I think I mean it's it's a question that. Uh, it's a great question. Um, I think, and I do have some uh, relatively strong views on it, but I'll I'll, I'll try and be balanced. Um, I think there, there there is. I speak from the position of um, during COVID. I I went to work for the Institute of Customer Service in London. Um, I was recruited online by the chief executive. Um, I didn't meet her for nine months, and I in eighteen months produced. 2.7 million pounds worth of revenue and I was meeting people online and I'd got uh you know seven people on calls so so I think the output my output was pretty obvious what we were doing you know we were busy I was busy rather I was at home and um, and actually I saw going to London as an inconvenience because actually it was a day it was a day off really and I didn't necessarily want it um uh, conversely um, so I think all of that thing, again, skilled managers um, can ch can check that, can see that. And I'm not talking about records. I'm not talking about listening to phone calls. What I'm saying is you can tell whether your team are online. You can tell whether they're not and what they're doing um, by talking to them. And 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 that, you know, so that that should not be a barrier. Um, presenteeism, I think it's important to uh you know we we i work in a business now that doesn't necessarily have an office you know we've got an office in barnsley and there's a, a there's a bolt hole down in in uh, bracknell but um we get together twice a week um on a tuesday and a thursday morning that's routine you know nicola and shane can tell whether people are up or down or whether they're absent and all of these things are, are there and, and, and i'm pretty sure they use that not just as a keeping everybody up to date but also um you know, recognizing and touching base with everybody, um, but but no, I mean, I, I, I've um, I, I've been in positions where, you, as you say, people are in the office, but they're not really. Um, so I would suggest that um, 
there are better ways to monitor people's sort of activity and in, in, involvement and, and, and sort of motivation, um, not just by being, am I physically in the office? I think it's actually a demotivator potentially for some, um, but um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Nobody likes to be micromanaged, do they? And I think we're you, you and I cut from the same cloth in terms of it's not the you know it's not the you know, the, the the hours they work, it's the work they do in the hours, isn't it? It's that that contribution. Yeah. And I think um, I think with yeah you know, with hybrid working, people can talk about um, improved systems and controls, and there is a um, a level of undoubted efficiency that it's it, it's brought into fact to you know. It, it, you can start your working day without the commute and you, you don't need to worry about the commute commute home. So there's some you know, definite some time benefits, but I don't know about you. I've also found it a little bit of a challenge at times. So even though I've, I've always operated remotely, so I've always operated in a sales environment. I've always operated remotely, but I actually don't like working from home. Um, yeah, right. And I've always tried to, whether it's been a coffee, you know, coffee shop or whether it's been a, mm. um, a serviced office that I've actually used Um my wife's brilliant. She's been a brilliant support to me over the years, um, but she is a bit of a nuisance and a pest if I'm around. Um, <laughs> you know, can I just do this? Can I just do that? Um, mm-hmm. But I also find that yeah, I, I'm consumed by work, and I can't help looking at emails first thing when I wake up, last thing when I go to bed. But I do try and have my home as my home as best I can. But it's yep. increasingly challenging. But just on the hybrid working, what's what what what's what's your personal view on it in terms of um i think if i look at the survey that we did recently uh the most recent survey we yeah we did and um, you know the general uh consensus was that you know people were enjoying you know, having that hybrid uh environment so they still liked mm. to have a couple of days in the office mixed with that working from yeah from home rather than being totally remote or totally in the office i just wondered what your view was and, and maybe your view around that health and well-being yeah, I, th- I think unquestionably, you know, my 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 personal preference is I'm I'm you know I'm in a fortunate position where I've got um, I've got an office at home that we can shut the door on and it says you know engaged in business and, and and literally it's like an office. So when we do put the laptop lids down, that's it. Um, and we've been quite strict about that because otherwise, as you say, it you know we've all been in the situation where you've been in a hotel and you've woken up and your laptop's on top. And then you flick it open and, and and it's almost like one day goes into the next. So uh, on a personal level, that, that's worked for me. Um, uh, but I think there's a blend. I think there has to be a blend. Um, you know, lots of organisations that I've been um, exposed to will be sort of in that. Uh, they still need to be in the office and they'll do a, you know, a, a touch point day on um, a hub day, whatever that you want to call it on a Wednesday. Um, speaking from my experience when I was with the Institute of Customer Service, I mean, you, you know, you've got the added complex there, complexity there of the things like call centers and the like. Um, so, you know, they, they, I think they've all conceded that people work better by having a hybrid setup. Um, and I think that from a, my wife does recruitment as well. So from a recruitment perspective, what I'd say is, candidates are now saying it needs to be hybrid because i'm used to hybrid and and those employers that uh that say that they um it's got to be in the office they're losing out on candidates so you know i think there's a de- definitely that yeah i think de- de- delivering that flexibility and uh again it comes back to i suppose a good culture doesn't it? a good culture listens to its staff and shapes its its future around the yeah you know, the staff and yeah you know, look I know you need good leadership to to have effective targets and end states but ultimately I think what both you and I've got this bit of humility with all our experience we still know the people who can make the best decisions in my business are the ones at the sharp end who actually you know share right. good information and enable us to create change based on what they're telling us from yeah from brokers and um, can I, just ask, can I just add one thing there? I've just, I've just, uh, when I worked at Friends Provident in Exeter, we had a lovely office in Southern Hay. Um, and when I tell people this, they don't believe me. Um, but this was, well, I didn't have a mobile phone. And I guess probably back then you didn't. Um, I, you know, later, later on it came. There was a whiteboard and there was Monday to Friday. And it was whether you were in or out. And you could literally tick that on a Monday and say, I'm out till next Monday. And there was no way anybody could get hold of you literally no way the only thing that counted were your numbers you know if you were wasting your time you were not going to hit your target and actually so so 
you know, in terms of everything's a clue, the numbers are a clue. You know, if your calls are down, if you're uh, all of these things um, are triggers to, you know, whether you've been busy or not. And, and, and I would encourage people that work from home to be busy or, you know, to do what they should be do, doing and what they're paid to do, because otherwise, um, you, you know, it, 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 they won't be able to do it. They won't be able to do it. Yeah. And I know we we started early on with the yeah the post that you you read out, which was mm. yeah, which really moving. How are you now? Yeah, um, um, as I said, I, I um, I'm pr- I'm pretty stable. It's not linear, so I do have sort of up days and 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 down days. And I think you know I'm blessed to be in a position where you know my colleagues Shane and and Nicola, you know I know they can tell. <laughs> Um, I've also got somebody in house that tells me, you know, I get, I can get a bit, uh, I go withdrawn. If I go withdrawn, um, it's a trigger. Uh, and also sometimes become a little bit impatient. Uh, and again, these are all signs, but no, generally Jason, I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm still on med- my medication, which I, uh, am, am not shy to say, and, 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 and that helps. Uh, and I, my, my life is in a good position. Um, I would suggest that I'm probably ready to go again soon <laughs> in terms of uh, taking on a bit more responsibility. And I think, you know, we've we've sort of discussed all of that. Uh, um, I, I'm doing a job at the moment that that is relatively straightforward um, and that's what suits me. Um, and that's what I, when Ring rang me, he said, look, I'm not sure we'll be able to afford you. And I just said, I said, I don't care how much how much it is and what you want me to do. I'll do it. I said, I'll come and work because that I, I just, I, you know, the, the business, I knew the business is, is a great business. Um, you know, I'm disappointed that I didn't meet um, Nicola Ying and Shane earlier because, you know, uh, that, that we could have done different things, but look, I, I'm absolutely thrilled to be there. And, and it's a, it's an amazing, amazing place to work as well as um, the things that they do. Yeah. I mean, it really is a good group of, 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 of people. Obviously I mentioned Nicola earlier in a, being a co-founder in, and you're just a beautiful person who is is is, is talented and ambitious. And again, it, it's a it's an experienced group and it's mm. a talented group that yeah that exists there within that 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 knowledge bank. I'm just wondering, is is there any maybe question that I've I've not asked that you'd have liked me to have asked, or is there anything else you'd like to share before I maybe summarise and and and, and give a a, a, a view of. Yeah, yeah the, I think that the only uh, thing I would say, I mean, look, I, I know I've rambled and I know I ramble on and I go off and, and you've done extremely well to keep me on, on tack. But um, I would just encourage people to talk. And I, and I know everybody says that, but, you know, I genuinely mean it. it, it don't talk to anybody, whether it's somebody in the street. You know, I, 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 I will talk to anybody now because I think I'm always looking out for other people that need to talk. <laughs> It, it's really weird, um, but the world's different. You can admit that things aren't great. And, you know, that I, I know we've all seen the Norwich um, Football Club um, uh, advert, but absolutely nailed it for me. That nailed it for me um, because it is a blind spot for a lot of people. But, you know, I walk for Samaritans. Um, I'm not a Samaritan, but I um, I would have no problem at all in, in suggesting people just call because they are there. I know a number of them. Um, talk to people, talk to people in the street, put, talk to me if you want. Uh, I got, when that post went up and I put my telephone number on, Jason, I am not kidding. I got people ringing me from all over the world, um, offering uh, support, also wanting to talk about si- similar situations. It triggered things with people. Um, people just just sometimes need that outlet that safe outlet so just just do it yeah look they, they say problem problem shared is a problem half but it's even more impactful than that isn't it and look i i, I opened at the beginning saying how uh you know brilliant your experience was across the sector um you know your your, your genuinity and your, your honesty comes across in space during the yeah during the conversation and you know like myself mate you i made myself available i'm sure um you would be a brilliant mentor to so many people and um, in more than just the yeah the business side so all that personal lived experience that you've you've got now Jonathan is is terrific but having worked in you know the technology the distribution and all that um 
you know, the roles that you've actually had. You've got so much to yeah to yeah to offer and and, and share. And just um, yeah, thank you for volunteering it up. And I'm sure you'll be uh, yeah, you'll be taken up on it. I love the yeah look. I love the 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 focus you've got on me time um, and how you've uh, I suppose evolved your journey to um, find pastimes and hobbies that just take you into a, a different headspace a different environment um, which is yeah which is absolutely crucial it's a bit of a theme we've seen across the across the across the series um, trying to be self assured and, and and be confident um, is you know can be difficult for yeah for yeah for for, for, for some people particularly who've maybe not got the lived experience you you and I have got but you know being confident enough to um not worry about work life balance but just integrate work into that personal life so so there isn't a, a conflict there is just really really important and look that focus you've got on on culture and good management and uh, ensuring that you know that 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 emotional intelligence just delivers understanding so um a caring approach can be delivered is 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 just absolutely um yeah gold does so look i really appreciate your yeah you you your time genuinely appreciate you sharing um again the post again which was something that you know hit me hard back 10 months ago um with our charter um we can see to gather momentum but as we touched on before we actually got started and got recording you know the two simple objectives are let's provide pathways and gateways so people can have conversation with experts we're not the experts and um, but there's pathways and gateways and for any business owner out there who's just looking to understand where they start we've got assets and materials that can just be lifted and dropped from the yeah from the website so i just urge people to become signatories and just get involved but i really appreciate um mm. you i'm thankful for the time you've given up and the and the honesty and i wish you all the best for for christmas and the new year and thank you can i just say this jason I mean, I saw your interview recently as well, and and I want to say thank you to you. You are a not. I nearly said you. You're a bloody nice bloke. You are, and I, and I, and I really appreciate the time that you've given me to talk to you, and what you're doing for the industry. It really does mean a lot, and and I I you know I whatever I can do to help, I will, and I'm really really grateful to 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 as I'm sure everybody is to what you do. I appreciate that, and 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 look, it really is a a joint effort. Without being too cheesy or cliche, the co-founders who stepped up, obviously Nicola was one of those. I couldn't have um, yeah done yeah done this without her and the other co-founders. And look, I feel we've not even got started. We're close to a tipping point. We're over 100 in signatories and touching 20,000 individuals now, which is incredible. So I'm so chuffed with the um, the progress we've made. But I promise you, we've not even got started, and the support and the. Um, uh, the support we can actually provide i'm sure can go to another level over the next couple of years and i'll definitely take you up on uh, yeah, getting involved in support so thanks very much for today and uh, yeah as i say wish you all the best yeah merry christmas cheers